All right, guys, welcome back to Formula One News. The Baku Grand Prix is over. Another one two for Red Bull amid a torrid day for Ferrari. But the key talking point of the day has been that every single driver on the grid, with the exception of one, believes that the bouncing problem on circuits like Azerbaijan is so great, something needs to be done about it. That one man, Fernando Titanium Spine Alonso. Very much interested in your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new, as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Verstappen won the Grand Prix. We're going to kind of run down exactly what was going on today with the race itself. But again, the key talking point after the race was the fact that, well, from the Mercedes drivers especially, but apparently every other driver on the grid, with the exception of Alonso, concerned about the effects of the bouncing right. We know that the likes of Mercedes back in Spain, when the track is very flat, they, their new upgrade seemed to work perfectly well on a track that, um, I mean, effectively, that, that circuit, that main straight is just an actual motorway, right? So the you know, bounces on the circuit are going to be quite severe. And on circuits like that, some cars suffer very significantly, some cars suffer more than others, but even the likes of McLaren, other drivers as well, saying today it was really tough out there on effectively the design of these new cars. Now, um, of course, a lot of drivers are saying, and a lot of maybe teams are saying themselves, Mercedes being right up there, that um, therefore things need to change in the regulations so that we can get around this right. And of course, well, some teams will want that to happen based on how competitive they currently are. Some teams certainly will not. So I'm sure this is going to be a battle that's going to rage on. But um, I mean, look, Wolf is saying, and the Mercedes guys are saying, this is affecting the, well, the health of the drivers, saying that even the physio can't fix some of the issues that it's causing. I think this was George Russell specifically, but at Hamilton seemed to be suffering even worse today, as you might expect for a man 13 years, Russell's senior. So let's do a brief rundown of the race. Going into turn one, Leclerc locked up, had a pretty difficult start. Actually, Verstappen might have been able to get him right here, but I think he got blocked up a bit by Sainz in the end. Um, I mean, yeah, Perez takes the lead into turn one. He brought out a bit of a gap, actually, early on. Leclerc managed to hold off Verstappen just a bounce. But um, yeah, it was Sainz actually on lap nine, a hydraulic failure sends him off the track. I'm sure we'll talk about more about these Ferrari issues here in the coming days. But uh, yeah, wow, he's out of the race already at lap nine. And it did not take long after that for the other Ferrari to be out as well. Hamilton had a really tough time behind Ocon because that LP in a straight line is absolutely rapid. Hamilton had to bide his time, stay patient, kind of work out what he wanted to do with where he was deploying his overtake button, this type of stuff, the energy recovery system. Eventually gets a great move done actually down there because if he was stuck behind Ocon too much longer because Hamilton had pitted actually under the, the virtual safety car that came out because a scientist thing, a lot of drivers decided to do that. Alpine did not. So Hamilton was on fresher tyres. If he'd have stuck behind much longer, he would have well, completely screwed up his race plot to be honest. But again, he managed to get past Ocon this time around. But um, yeah, he was having a hard time on the straight. Honestly, just watching Hamilton, it was brutal to watch. Like, the bouncing effect of that car on the straights there, like I'm definitely partially to do with the, well, the, the bounces on the straight itself. The bumps on the straight, not ideal at all. I think a lot of drivers were suffering today. But yeah, the Mercedes more than most, it must be said. That car just seems like an absolute nightmare, right? Now, um, well, lap 20, just a couple of laps later, Leclerc's engine blows out. This, honestly, the smoke here maybe indicates an oil leak. It's kind of tough to say. But um, I mean, yeah, honestly, an incredibly torrid day for Ferrari because not only did both of their drivers conk out with hydraulic and engine issues respectively by lap 20, but two other cars on the grid had to retire on the day or like I think Stroll had to retire as well but due to another separate issue, but um, and both those other cars that, that retired due to potentially power unit related issues were also Ferraris right, so this is devastating for Leclerc, the same thing happened in, in Spain, not like it was going to be away and gone for an easy victory, here I think it would have been harder, I'm not sure if it would have been a hold off for Sappen with the pace he had on the day, because um, Leclerc right here, they pitted under the virtual safety car as well, as it worked out though with the additional safety car coming out for Magnussen and later in the race, Leclerc probably would have had still some sort of advantage. He'd have been out of pit for a fresh set of tyres and um, would have had maybe a few seconds advantage to Verstappen at the end of the race to hold on for. But of course, doesn't get the opportunity because his car blows up. Classic start. Honestly, like Ferrari, it is incredible really how quickly Ferrari can manage to turn a very promising season and a great start into, well, complete despair for both of the drivers. So anyway, we're back underway and Guang Yu Zhou, Zhou Guang Yu, just a few laps later, another retiree, another technical issue. So he's had to retire from three of the last four races. Tough for him because I feel like he's been driving really well lately, but um, hasn't got anything to show for it, unfortunately, so he's out of the race as well. Magnussen, not long after that, another virtual safety car for this one, more engine issues for the Ferrari. So this is honestly, like, I'm looking very bad because it's not like it's just one issue. These cars are having all sorts of issues, hydraulics, engine, turbo issues, MGUH, like uh, Leclerc had back in Spain. They can't really seem to get on top of any of it, right? So that's the thing, so many reliability issues across the board. We thought this championship might be decided by reliability when Red Bull were having their issues early on in the year, and now um, all of a sudden they fixed their problem seemingly, and it's Ferrari that are struggling immensely these last few races. Even Yuki Tsunoda had some sort of issue with his DRS. It kind of, the flap just did not work at all. One half was open, one half wasn't. They fixed it with some duct safe and apparently the FA were happy with that. They sent him out to go again for the rest of the race. Hamilton manages to make a couple of moves towards the end, takes Tsunoda, gets Gasly at the end as well on a fresh set of hards. Interesting decision really from AlphaTauri not to pit Gasly under the virtual safety car because I feel like it was the no-brainer really for Mercedes to bring both their drivers in, fresh set of hards, and then that was enough for Hamilton to get past in the end despite the kind of straight line speeds. 
deficit that they were dealing with, kind of running a bit more down for seemingly than some of the other teams. But yeah, this was the top 10. And really the story of the day was not only Russell getting another podium here, but just great performances from the midfield. Gasly P5, Vettel P6, a great drive for him. Alonso P7 as well. Ricardo above Norris. So a bit of a battle between the McLaren guys there. But honestly, Gasly, Vettel, Alonso, like great drives from them. Like I'm just showing it, well, how it's done, I suppose, at the top of the midfield. But maximum points for the Red Bull guys again. Perez gets the fastest lap in the end. So that might prove crucial down the line. Who knows? But he just did not have the pace today to match Verstappen in the race. I'm pretty sure Perez led every single session from Verstappen the last like, under, like 10 sessions or so because he was leading in, in FP1, FP2, FP3, Quali and the race back in Monaco. And the same thing this weekend, I guess nine sessions it was this weekend. I'm pretty sure he led Verstappen in every single practice and qualifying and then of course lost him in the race here. And Verstappen was just imperious today. But yeah, Perez complaining about the fact that his tyres, he was having more degradation than seemingly Verstappen was finished about 20 seconds behind him at the end, even though there were a couple of bad pit stops in there. And yeah, this is kind of how the pit stop strategy played out through the race. Obviously a couple of safety cars indicating generally where teams decided to go with it. But the bottom four finishes right here, all Ferrari power units, not a good sign at all. This also was noticed from Sam Collins, which he believes was Leclerc's car, what well, seems to be an oil leak, right? So this is a bit of an issue. If oil can leak through, gets into the engine, makes it explode, that's kind of how things go. Now, um, I mean, yeah, certainly not a good sign from there. I suppose we'll see. They'll kind of do their investigations on what they think went wrong with the car. But even before the power unit exploded, this was the amount of elements used throughout the engine. Like we can see already on the second engine, already gone through loads of turbos, MGUH, MGUK. Like, um, and now, like, look, basically, not only does it screw this race up, but it means they're going to have to take more engines in the future, more parts in the future. That's going to mean engine penalties. So um, even if they have the fastest car by a mile, which they don't, at least outside of qualifying, then um, it's going to really hurt them down the line because taking 10 place, 5 place grid penalties at the end of the season is really going to cost them right in terms of potential points they can put up when the Red Bull guys have generally been really good in maintaining power unit elements at least so far this season, right? And of course, well, Leclerc was having a hard time getting over the disappointment here, but he's got to try and keep his head up because um, he's really not put a foot wrong the last few races, but um, still finds himself getting costed by his team. I mean, look, it's Ferrari. Being Ferrari, who's surprised at this point? Now, the interesting thing is actually kind of out of nowhere. George Russell is now only 17 points behind Charles Leclerc. That's just, um, you know, second place finish. Charles Leclerc, another DNF. That all of a sudden, that gap is overturned. So he's been killing it lately. Another great result for him. Another um, P5 and above. Another podium, third of the season for him. But um, even you can see after the race, struggling with some back issues here. Hamilton most certainly was. He got out of the race and said the following. It's the most physically difficult race I've ever done. I've never felt pain like this in a car. It was constantly hitting me. I was like, don't give up. He basically said that only the adrenaline was carrying him through the end of the race. He got out the car and, um, you know, looked like he was in an awful lot of pain. Maybe he was laying it on a bit thick just to show that, the, sure, show the engineers effectively kind of what he was going through in um, well, as much detail as he possibly could. But yeah, can't express the pain you experience, particularly on the straight air. And at the end, you're just praying for it to end. So not what they want to hear. And he says he's going to go to the factory and effectively sort them out or well, maybe raise at the right height of the car himself. We shall see. Now, um, yeah, of course, Ted DeWolf says, we all know a bit of a, you know, a bit of a trash box to drive at the moment. Sorry for the back also. We will sort ourselves out. Well done, guys, etc., etc. Let's definitely make some changes, okay, he says after the race. Now, this was a very interesting comment from Toto Wolf after the race concludes with regard to the bouncing issue that is, um, at least on circuits like this, where the track is very bumpy, hurting all of the drivers. Like um, the McLaren drivers that said themselves, other drivers as well, so that they were really suffering. Even the Red Bull guys that don't really seem to have the same issue. Like um, they were still not particularly happy with how these cars felt on, on the straights around Azerbaijan on a track that's usually not particularly physical. Now, um, as he says, all drivers got together and agreed to that it is a problem. And of course, if someone agrees it's a problem, then of course that implies a solution is necessary. Apart from one driver though, that being Alonso. So Alonso always throwing a spatter in the works, right? This guy apparently is, is spied, as I said earlier, has made a titanium. He just doesn't care. Like, you know, he's fine. He's just a young, sprightly guy. Absolutely no issues at all. So he's apparently happy with it. And look, I understand from Alonso's point of view, because I'm sure he looks at this and thinks, okay, yeah, classic. This is Mercedes trying to say, oh, you know, wow, it's really hurting our drivers. We've got to change the regulations this way or that, bring back active suspension or something like that, which um, of course will favor them compared to the other team. So I can understand like at that point of view, but at the same time, do Mercedes have a fair point on this issue? Because I think George Russell made an interesting point just yesterday after qualifying that, um, look, he can't expect them or can't imagine that they're going to run it for four years just like this. As he says at the end here, now with the cars running so close to the ground now in the high speed corners, the cars are fully bottoming out. It's the same for everybody. Really not comfortable to drive. Don't know what the future holds for this era of cars, but I can't see us running like this for the next four years. So for all of us, conversations will be needed as we are all in the same boat. And it seems like most drivers agree with this sentiment that um, it's really not particularly good. So what exactly do you do about this, right? Because Lando Norris is like, look, at the end of the day, if they want to just raise the ride height, they can do that, right? But that's the thing. It's always a balance between how low do you run the car so that your drivers don't, you know, bounce all over the place and destroy their spine compared to actually the performance you can gain from that, right? So like, I'm sure some teams are going to say, like, just raise the ride height, sacrifice performance, but, um, you know, make it more 
comfortable for your drivers. So Rossell actually gave a couple of reasons why that might not necessarily help too much, just because the way the cars are designed anyway, with them um, the flooring as they are and the bounces on these circuits, like even if you raise the right heights, it's not going to completely stop the issues, right? If you stiffen up the suspension, stuff like this. So we were saying that even if you raise the right height, it might not, you know, fully solve those issues. Kind of either way, you're going to run into some sort of issues, either with porpoising or with bottoming out on the car, which of course will kind of cause the same effect for your back on certain circuits. So, um, I mean, it seems like most drivers agree that something probably should be done about this. But of course, look, if, um, you know, that's step one, let's say, and not even all drivers agree anyway, because Alonso doesn't seem to. But even if they got to that point, what do you even do about this, right? Because let's say Mercedes are like, look, we want to bring back active suspension or we want to do X, Y, Z. That's going to mean that we can, um, you know, deal with these issues in a different way. Red Bull are going to be like, well, hang on a second, you're just doing that to make the regulations and that in your favor, right? But I feel like George Russell has a point about the fact that they're bouncing on these cars. Just because at least from my point of view, you don't really want to be looking at this sport for the next, you know, four years or whatever and say, okay, well, look at these cars bouncing up and down on these straights. It doesn't really seem like the pinnacle of motor racing and the drivers are getting out after some races like this, holding their back, like really struggling physically. Like it doesn't seem like something that uh, seems like the pinnacle of motorsport, right? So from my perspective, something probably will be done about this or maybe needs to, but um, you know, maybe won't happen anytime soon. So we'll see how the conversation develops on this one. But a few interesting stats to close out the video here, because this other was rather remarkable. I believe now Verstappen has five wins from Charles Leclerc pole positions and Leclerc only has four wins from Charles Leclerc pole positions. So that is tough. Of course, a massive day for Red Bull. Their fifth race victory in a row now. Four of these, of course, have gone to Verstappen. And um, of course, Monaco went the way of Perez, who won at the circuit last year. And Verstappen winning now means that there's been a different race winner at each of the six times that Baku has been run. So very interesting yet, well, set of numbers right here. This also as well, definitely maybe indicating how the rest of the season might go with it. The last time that Red Bull was 1-2 in the Drivers' Championship, because now Perez has overtaken Leclerc, very importantly. It's a 1-2 for Verstappen and Perez in the Drivers. Last time that happened for Red Bull was back in the 2011 Belgian Grand Prix, where, um, of course, well, Sebastian Vettel went on to win the title of that season. And the driver's standings like this. So Russell not far behind Leclerc, but uh, I mean, the Red Bull guys, just a few races, uh, five races ago, it was after, well, Australia, and Verstappen said, I'll need 45 races to catch Leclerc. It all of a sudden looks like both championships, drivers and constructors, might well be over if Ferrari can't turn things around very quickly indeed. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new as always. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.